Granny United in the house, how's everybody doing today? Hey man, how incredible was that worship? Can we just put our hands together and thank all of our worship teams? Come on somebody, amen. I love our worship here at Granite United. By the way, I am so grateful for all of our dream teamers. Whether uh, you serve at the Salem Saturday campus, Haverhill campus, Salem Sunday campus, our Lawrence campus, the I campus, um, thank you for what you do. By the way, one of the reasons why I mention uh, all of our campuses every weekend is because I never want you to forget we're one church, somebody say one church, in multiple locations. We have about 600 people that serve in our church once a month, uh, frequent ministries, infrequent ministries, from kids ministry, student ministry, from, from parking lots, pews, preschool, and all the other areas that we have to, to do in order to prep for our weekend services. We couldn't do what we do here at Granny United Church without you. So on the count of three, here's what I want everybody to do. Are you ready? I want you on the count of three, Let's put our hands together and let's just thank everybody who makes Granite United Church happen every week. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, somebody. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dream Teamers. By the way, if you want to talk about how you can be part of a dream team, because you know what? Every one of you who call Granite United uh, home and, and everybody who is in Christ, somebody say in Christ. In Christ, man, you have been given some incredible gifts by God to use for his glory. You are a 10 in some area. Matter of fact, let's have a little fun in the house. On the count of three, I want you to look at somebody around you, point a finger at them and say, you are a 10. Ready? One, two, three. You are a 10. We absolutely believe that because that's what the Bible teaches. And, and if you want to know how you can use your gifts to help us, um, you know, build the church by loving God and serving others right after the service, you can go to one, go to our, go to our dream team station. We got these dream team carts on every one of our campuses where you just go there and just say, Hey, what can I do around here? And somebody would love to talk to you about all the opportunities we have on every campus for you to get in the game. On a count of three, let me hear everybody say, get in the game. Ready? One, two, three. Get in the game. This goes back to something I said last week where I told you that God has big plans for each and every one of us. And I 100% believe that. Absolutely believe that you're a one of a kind, God designed masterpiece, and that God's got huge plans for your life. Now listen to me. I know some of you kind of question that, but, but no matter who you are, what you've done, what people have said about you, what you think about you, listen to me. You are not damaged goods. You're not damaged goods. And by the way, since you're still here, I, again, absolutely believe that God's not finished with you yet. And so, man, I just want to encourage you to, to lock arms with the church, with, with the people on your campus, and engage. Get in the game. It will bless you. It will help grow you. And I promise you, man, it will, it will glorify God and open up God's blessings in your life. Because as we've learned in this entire series called Unshakable, Life Happens. And when life happens, when life happens, whether it's in the form of people, circumstances, Things we bring onto ourselves, whether it's good or bad, uh, things will always try. These things will always try to shake our faith with the end goal of robbing God's best from each and every one of us. So we need to have the right people in our lives cheering us along um, as we continue to try to plant both feet solid, you know, um, on the ground. I was going to say solidly, I don't think that's a word, but, but on the ground so that we can stand firm in our faith, have this in unshakable faith. It's why we took so much time this month uh, to explain to you from the Word of God, somebody say the Bible. We say three things here at Granny United all the time, don't we? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Come on, what does the Bible say? Because I want you to know what the Word of God says and teaches about who you are in Christ. And it's been a big, big study. We've been studying this now for a couple of months because when life happens, by the way, 
and it, life has happened and life will continue to happen. I want you to know that we can have, you, you can choose to have circumstantial theology, which means how if things are good, you know, I'm going to serve God, walk with God. But when life, the difficult happens, you know, I'm just going to tap out, run away. No, no, no. You can have a kind of a faith that, that wavers in the storms of life, or you can walk in confidence and in joy. And that's what we learn, because when we understand who we are in Christ, what, what, it, what, what we have in Christ, this is incredible, that, that, that there are things that God has done in our life, given us promises, um, that give us joy beyond circumstances, because we know who we are in Christ, and that nothing, somebody say nothing, come on, Haverhill, somebody say nothing, one more time, ready, one, two, three, nothing, nothing can take us away from all the things that we are blessed with in Jesus Christ, nothing, I'm talking about spiritually, you can walk away, you can tap out, but if you are truly born again and in Christ, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will work in your life, um, maybe convict you to bring you back into right alignment with the word of God and the God of the word. But know this, spiritually speaking, if you are in Christ, nothing can rip you from God's love or rip you out of the family of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, somebody say the Bible. <laughs> I, love, I love saying that in church, right? In Romans chapter 8, verse 38, the Bible says this, and I am convinced that, come on, nothing, that nothing, Absolutely nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Remember, this entire series has been about you are locked in. It is a done deal. It is a slam dunk that if you are in Christ, somebody say in Christ, nothing can take you out of God's family. Nothing, not, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together and thank God for that today. Oh, get a little louder for that than that. Come on, amen? Telling you. And even though we know how blessed we are in Christ, here's the deal. We still have to battle every day. Listen, a Christian life isn't a playground, it's a battlefield. And the enemy wants to constantly play head games with our faith. Because even though he can't take us away from Christ, or like rob us from our, from our family um, position in Christ, uh, all the things that Jesus has given us, he at least wants to minimize our platforms and squelch our voices for Jesus. He knows he's lost in the when and then. He just wants to try to gain an advantage in the here and now. And so this is why in this closing message, I want to talk to you about some things that will help you to remain unshakable. Because I'm going to say it again. Because life has happened. Life will continue to happen. There's going to be highs and lows. There's going to be valleys and mountaintops. But listen, you can have, as we've learned in the past two months, this unshakable faith. So how do we get there? How do we get there? On a count of three, I want you to look at somebody around you and just tell them to listen up. Ready? One, two, three. Listen up. This is huge. Number one is this. If you're taking notes, write this down. If you're not taking notes, write this down. All right, number one is this. Make a commitment to spend time in God's presence every day. You say, we talk about that all the time. Yes, because it's the fundamental key to any relationship. T-I-M-E, spending quality time and quantity time. People say, should I, should I have quantity or quality you know, and the answer is yes, quantity and quality time with God every day. And I know that sounds like an oversimplification, but listen to me. It is the key to remaining unshakable in the here and now. And the reason why we've made, uh, we, we've, we have to make this commitment is because, as I said a second ago, every day is a battle. Every day is 
is a head game. Everybody on every campus goes through it. You're not the only one. We are all in the battle. There are no perfect people. There are no perfect Christians. Christianity is not about perfection. It's about progress. One step, one day at a time. Can a brother get an amen? Give me a deeper amen. Amen. Right? That's what it is. We're all going to fall. We're all going to fail at times. We're all going to come up short. We're going to mess up at times. But none of that is an excuse for us to cave in to temptation or to sin. Because we know we need to take heed lest we fall, we put on the whole armor of God. And as one of the men on our campuses say, we get up every morning, we say, to war. (laughs) We ready to go to spiritual, we're ready for spiritual warfare. But it is not in a reason, your, your humanity is not a reason to avoid God. It is a reason to run to God, to spend time in the presence of God. And so let me just help you with this as well, with, with some reality. When you do fall short, when you do trip up, can I just say this? Come clean with God. Don't run from God. Don't avoid God. Don't try to, to, to avoid eye contact with God. Get into his presence. And just come clean with God. Sin's going to try to shake you. And the truth is, you're never going to experience God's best running from God and and caving in uh, to sin. You never win with sin. Somebody write that down. Somebody tweet that. You never win with sin. You have to come clean before God. All right, you say, well, I thought I was in Christ. You are in Christ. We're not talking about our standing in Christ. We're talking about our walking with Christ, our fellowship with Christ. Man, we've got to clean up every day, all right? King David came to know this all too well after he had made a train wreck out of his life. He finally, after after some time of in severe conviction and some dark times in his life, he finally comes clean before God and he surrenders. And here's what he says in Psalms 51, verse 1. And if the words are underlined, you read these. Are you ready? Every campus, ready? Have what? Come on. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. In other words, what is mercy? We've learned it all month as we've been studying the word of God. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving to us what we do deserve. God, I know I've screwed up. God, I know I've messed up. I know there ought to be some real negative consequences to some choices that I made. And I might have to deal with some stuff long term. But for you, God, before you, I'm just asking you to give me mercy. God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I know I deserve this. I'm begging you for your mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. I know I don't deserve it, God, but I know you love me with an unfailing, unconditional love. Aren't you grateful for the mercy of God? Come on, somebody. Amen. Thank you, God. Because of your great compassion, Blot out the stain of my sins. Verse 7. Purify me from, next two words, my sins. I love that. So I can be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Now look at verse 8. At What happens when you come clean? Wash me, right? God have mercy. Wash me. When you come clean before God, look at verse 8. Do not miss this. This is why a lot of Christians, this is a key, a lot of Christians are missing. Why a lot of Christians are walking around depressed, discouraged, and broken. Because you haven't done verse, verses uh, 6 and 7. But here's the deal. It goes on to say, verse 8. Oh, give me back, next two words, my joy. Give me back my joy. You want to get back to joy the Lord? Listen, stop running in sin. Stop allowing the world to shake you. Take your, Plant your two feet solid um, on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, stand firm in the faith. Make a determination. I'm not going to be shaken by sin. I'm going to live an unshakable life. But if you do fall, come clean before God. God, give me your mercy. God, wash me. Lord, I'm sorry. I don't want to run in that lane anymore and, and give Give me your joy again. 
because you have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Now let me rejoice. There is no winning with sin, and there is no joy of the Lord when you're dirty. So if you want to be unshakable, it's okay. You're going to trip up. You're going to fall. Stay in God's presence. Confess it. Come clean. David learned real quick that sin breaks a person and robs them from the one thing that Jesus said, I've come to bring you my joy and to give it to you more abundantly. But the devil's come to kill, steal, destroy. The reason why we have Jesus and we needed it is because we needed a savior. And not only a savior for our forever, we need a savior and a Lord for every day. Come clean before God. Remember the wages of sin is always death destruction and darkness man you will be shaken in your faith if you got one foot in a word and one foot in the world that is unstable the bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways put both feet solidly on the word of god and the god of the word it's huge and the gift, of a, the gift of God, remember what Jesus said, I'm going to give you life, give it to you more abundantly. The gift of God is abundant life and everlasting life. But like David, that all starts when you get real with God. And when you come clean, when you confess your sin before God, and once you come clean before God, listen, you can then begin uh, moving forward, staying clean, staying unshakable, and doing it all with overflowing, overwhelming joy. Because God's not just a promise maker, he's a promise keeper in his presence. Listen, we said it, we've been saying it for years now, granted. In God's presence, perspective changes, people change, hope is restored, and joy is found. If you're with me, Haverhill, Lawrence, I campus, Salem campuses, put your hands together. Come on. Get a little louder than that, Haverhill. Come on, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And there's more. There's so much more to living an unshakable life. I want you to look at the next person. I want you to look at somebody next to you. Look at somebody next to you. And on the count of three, look at them and say, I I really need you to do this. I want you to look at them and say, this next step is a big step. So listen up. Ready? One, two, three. This next step is a big step. So listen up. Now. And to give you the next steps, to give you the next key to living an unshakable life, put your hands together for your campus pastors. Come on, guys. Amen. All right, ready? Here we go, I campus. Once you come clean with God, the next step is this. First, we, we run to the presence of God. We spend quality and quantity time in God's presence, right? Once we do that, the next thing is this, to involve and invite other Christ followers on your, onto your journey. You cannot do life alone. God has never called you to isolate yourself from other believers. That's never what God calls us to. God calls us to live inside of community. Going through the Christian life alone was never, somebody type never in the comments, was never God's plan for you. And I know many of you are on the I campus and some of you for a very important reason because, you know, you're dealing with stuff physically where you have to and cannot be in large crowds. I understand it. I am grateful that we have an I campus and that's why we do small groups on our I campuses. It's why you can serve on the I campus. It's why you can get to know people on the I campus. If you're watching us online, it's why we have the chat so you can say hello. You can be greeted by real people. You can engage in, and participate in the messages. You can be prayed for and prayed with. Man, that's why the I campus is so important to our church. It is an active community of incredible people who are doing life together. Somebody give me some hand emojis. Come on, I campus. Love you guys. You guys are absolutely incredible. But every one of us were created for community to live inside a community and you were not the exception. You're exceptional, 
but you are not the exception of living inside community. And because I know some of you didn't hear that, uh, it's important enough for me to repeat. Listen, going through the Christian life alone was never, it never was and never is God's plan for your life. And you're not the exception. God wants you to be in community. James chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says this. Confess your sins to each other, community, and pray for each other. Involve, invite other people into your life so that you may be healed. You may be strong. You may be unshakable. You can be encouraged. All of these things are inside of that word healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great result, uh, great power and produces what? Wonderful results. Listen to me. You need relationships on two levels, one with God and one with others. That's why Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Why? You were created as a, as a being that's created in the image of God. You were created to have a relationship with God and with others. We Listen, and when it comes to this verse in James chapter 5, we don't confess everything to everybody or just any old buddy. Don't misunderstand this. You're going to be tempted to think, all I need to do is confess to God. And you're right. God's the only one that can, can, can forgive you of your sin. You're right. But if you want to stay the course, you need to realize that God has brought other people through, uh, across your path that you need to involve and invite in who can encourage and strengthen you in your Christian journey. Hey, man, I struggle with this. I've asked God to forgive me, but will you hold me accountable? Hey, man, I really want to grow in this. I've asked God to help me, but can, you, can we lock arms together and do this together? It is an incredible thing. To, to The wonderful results of community are huge. For some of you right now, it's time. It's time to, you know... Uh, just step away from sin. It's just time to stop the sinning. It is robbing God's best from you. It is robbing God's joy from you. And you just need to come clean and begin the journey back to joy, which begins in God's presence. God, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. Make me clean and restore my joy. And he will. He will restore the joy. He will bring joy back into your life. He will bring joy back into your relationships if you come clean before God, all right, and invite others along the journey. This is key. But it all starts with coming clean. It all starts with confessing sin. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you're, you've lost your joy, man, what is it that is causing you or robbing from you the one thing, one of the things that Jesus, I've come to give you my joy so that your joy may overflow. Confess it. It's not worth it. You're giving up so much. For so little. And for others of you on here today, listen, it's time for you to begin a relationship with Jesus. You just watched us for about 25 minutes and you're still here. And the reason you're still here is because the Holy Spirit's working in your life. You want this joy. You want to come clean before God. You're tired of the sin. You're tired of everything that sin has taken from you. And you're, you're just done with it. Well, that's a good place to be. Now you need to take a step. And that step for you is inviting Jesus Christ to be your Savior. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're one prayer away from crossing the line of faith and beginning this journey called the Christian life. And if you're ready to do that, I want to ask you to pray this prayer. Ready? Pray it right there where you're at. Dear Lord Jesus. Now pray that. Dear Lord Jesus, I am asking you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, I'm inviting you into my life. God, I am opening up the door of my heart. God, I, today I surrender and I say yes to you. God, I, I embrace you as my Savior. Lord, I'm crossing a line of faith today. Jesus, from this point going forward in my life, I will follow you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me a clean heart and a brand new start. And today, God, not only do I turn the direction of my life to follow you, 
But today, God, I'm going to lock arms with your church and learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, two, two things I want you to do. Ready? Now, listen to me. Number one, put a hand emoji in the comments. Come on, put a hand emoji in. You put a hand emoji in there so our hosts can, can congratulate you. And then the second thing is you take a picture, screenshot of the link on the screen right now. And when we're all done here, I want you to go to this link and I want you to fill out the information. All right, so we can congratulate you and reach out to you. Also, if you call Granny United your home, if the I campus is your home, I want you to start serving. I want you um, to go to our website, all right, grannyunited.com and, and slash dream team. You just volunteer there, fill out the information. Somebody will reach out to you about how you can get involved in our church, whether it's on the I campus, whether it's an infrequent ministry, a frequent ministry, a weekday ministry, a weekend ministry. The other thing is, if you're not part of a small group, you need to invite and involve others into your life. You can do that. You can just right now say, tell me more about groups. Right now in the chat, right now in the chat, somebody right now can post inside the chat, grannyunited.com slash groups. Uh, you can go to that link. Or you can go to our website, go to our app, and just click on there, get more information. And then here's the last thing. I want you to be unshakable. You need weekly encouragement. Now, you need to be daily walking with God. But every weekend, when humanly possible, I want you to commit to being in church. Next week, we're kicking off a brand new series. It's going to be awesome, and I look forward to seeing you there. I want to pray for us, and when I'm done praying... I want to see you Tuesday night on Facebook Live or YouTube Live at 7.05. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Give a blessing to your word. If for these I suggest to you today, thank you. God, I pray that your word would take root in our heart and produce fruit in our lives. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. iCampus, how are you doing? My name is Rick Frost. I'm our iCampus pastor here at Granite United Church, and we are so excited to launch graniteunited.online.church, our third streaming platform for iCampus. Here's some advantages to this new platform. You can view and download sermon notes. You can connect to your YouVersion Bible app account, which is so cool. And of course, there's a public chat feature that's available on Facebook. So go to your web browser, type in graniteunited.online.church, set up your account in less than a minute, and let us know what you think. And if you're interested in serving on our iCampus team, start the conversation with us by emailing us at info at graniteunited.com.